Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, my dear friend, ladies and gentlemen, it is always our great pleasure to receive here in Russia the great friend of our country, Mr. Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi. His official visit it's been time to coincide with his participation in the Eastern Economic Forum. Tomorrow, Mr. Modi and I will deliver a statement at the plenary session of the forum. I would underscore that India is one of Russia's key partners. The relationship between our states is of strategic and especially privileged nature. We have been developing them consistently based on friendship and mutual benefit. Mr. Modi and I keep in close touch personally and on working basis. We have regular meetings which have already become a good tradition. Quite recently, we have met uh, on the margins of the Council of Head of States of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in Bishkek and G20 Summit in Osaka. Our talks always take place in a friendly, frank atmosphere. They are always result-oriented and constructed. And that was the case today as well. First, in a restricted form and tete -tete, and then with the participation of our delegations, we've exchanged views on the key issues for our bilateral cooperation. We've discussed the current state of implementation of the decisions taken during the previous summit in New Delhi. We've also outlined our future goals that were reflected in the joint statement we've adopted today. A solid package of interagency and corporate agreements that we've just signed covers diverse areas and will definitely facilitate the further expansion of multi Natural Russian and Indian sides. We place our priorities on trade and investment cooperation. Last year, our bilateral trade grew by almost 17 percent and amounted to 11 billion US dollars. We believe that there is every condition to make sure it can grow even further on. The expansion of our economic cooperation is the goal of the strategy of cooperation between Russian and Indian relevant agencies that has been adopted today. This document envisages the remote of various in investment area, promoting large-scale mutually beneficial joint projects in priority fields, increasing scientific, technological, and innovative cooperation. I'm convinced that some additional possibilities for diversifying our goods flows will unlock as soon as we establish a free trade area between India and Eurasian Economic Union. It is our common goal, and in the near future, we are going to hold the first round of negotiations to develop such an agreement. An important element of our joint work with India is the introduction of mutual settlements in national currencies. We believe that such smooth bank-to-bank -bank transactions could be further facilitated by India's participation in the financial messaging system of the Bank of Russia. We've discussed in great detail, with, together with Mr. Prime Minister, our cooperation on energy, which is the strategic sphere of our cooperation. Russia is a reliable supplier of energy resources to India. Following the results of last year, we've shipped about 2.3 million tons of oil, almost 550,000 tons of oil oil products 4.5 million tons of coal. A major part of Russian hydrocarbons from Russia to India goes from the far east of Russia. Indian partners own 20 percent in Sakhalin 1 project. Energy companies of Russia are invited to participate in other promising projects such as Far Eastern LNG and Arctic LNG-2. The flagship joint project is our cooperation between the Ross Adam and our Indian partners regarding the construction of uh, Kudang Kulam nuclear power plant. The first two units are already operational. The construction of the third and fourth power units is carried out in accordance with this schedule. According to the arrangements that we have in the next 20 years, we'll build no less than 20 uh, power units based on Russian design. Russia and India are closely cooperating in military and technical area. We are successfully implementing our bilateral program on military and technical cooperation up to 2020. We are working on updating it for another 10 years. I would emphasize that for more than 50 years our country has been assisting India in equipping and modernizing its armed forces, including its navy. 
Many Russian vessels are part of the Indian Navy, including the Vikramaditya aircraft carrier. Today, Mr. Prime Minister and I visited the shipbuilding yard Zvezda in the city of Bolshoi Kamen, where the nuclear-powered submarine was modernized at some point that was adopted in 1988 to the Navy of India under the name of Chakra. That is also the place where the Indian crew of the submarine was trained. Not only does Russia supply armaments to India, together with Indian partners, we produce the state-of-the-art military purpose products. We're implementing joint products on producing in India Kalashnikov small arms and Car 226T helicopters and missile systems. We value the current level of bilateral military and technical cooperation. We are ready to strengthen and to consolidate it even further on. During our talks, we discussed in detail our bilateral humanitarian ties. The first events within the framework of the Festival of Indian Culture are to take place in the near future in Vladivostok. According to the program of this festival, uh, many performance groups from India will go on tour all around Russia, including instrumental groups and vocal groups, and dancing teams and martial artists. I can't but mention the deep interest demonstrated by the nations uh, of Russia and India to culture, history, and spiritual values of each other. Let me remind you that one of the first Europeans who reached India was the Russian traveler Afanasy Nikitin. More than 500 years ago, he described in detail Indian traditions and customs. Russian artist and philosopher Nikolai Rary spent a lot of time living and working in India, whose artwork is treasured by Indians even nowadays. We in Russia also treasure the memory and legacy of the outside standing Indian politician, scientist, and philosopher Mahatma Gandhi. On the occasion of the 105th anniversary since his birthday, which is celebrated this year, we have issued a commemorative postal stamp. When discussing international agenda, we've confirmed that Russia's and India's positions are close on key global and regional agenda. Our countries are carrying out foreign policy coordination within the framework of the leading multilateral formats, such as the UN, the G20, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and BRICS. Russia and India are working together on ensuring security, safety, and stability in Asia, in Indian and Pacific regions. We are working together within the Russia-India-China format. On June 28th in Osaka, on the sidelines of the G20 summit, we had another trilateral meeting. We discussed, of course, other issues as well, including Afghanistan. In conclusion, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Prime Minister, to all Indian colleagues for these productive and fruitful talks. I'm convinced the agreements we've achieved today will help further develop our Russian and India strategic partnership comprehensively and consolidate friendship between the nations. I would also like to thank Mr. Modi for accepting our invitation uh, for our invitation to be present on the 9th of May at the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the victory in the Second World War. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. We look forward to seeing you in Moscow. Your Excellency, Rashpati Putin, friends, Namaskar, Dobri Vechis, Jahase Subhaka. I'm extremely pleased to be here in Vladivostok, Vladivostok, which receives the morning sunlight before any other place in the world, where the victory over nature of our Russian friends, thanks to their relentless struggle, is a source of inspiration for the entire world, where new sagas are written about human development 
in the 21st century. Vladivostok, a city shaped by the devotion to hard work, the ruler of the East. It is truly a pleasure to be here. And all this has been possible thanks to the invitation I received from my close friend, President Putin. This invitation that also gave me the chance to be the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Vladivostok. I am very grateful to President Putin, to my friend for this as well. And it is a fortunate historical coincidence that uh, President Putin and I have just uh, concluded the uh, 20th India-Russia Annual Summit. In the year 2001, when the first India-Russia summit took place in Russia, my friend Putin was the president of Russia at the time. And as uh, uh, I accompanied our prime minister at the time, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, as uh, Gujarat's chief minister, I was a member of the Indian delegation. During this common political journey that President Putin and I have had, the journey of friendship and cooperation between our countries has also moved forward at a very fast pace. During this time, our special and privileged strategic partnership has not only served the strategic interests of both our countries, but we have linked it to the development of our people and to direct benefits for them. President Putin and I have taken this relationship to new heights of cooperation on the basis of trust and partnership. And there have been not just quantitative but qualitative changes in our achievements. First of all, we have taken cooperation beyond the scope of government-to-government -government cooperation and added to it the unlimited energy of cooperation between our people and private industries. Today, we have been witness to the signing of dozens of business agreements. In strategic areas such as defense as well, uh, the agreement we have just signed to create joint ventures between us for the manufacture of spare parts for Russian equipment in India. This will give a big impetus to uh, industry. This agreement and the AK-203 joint venture started this year are steps that take our defense cooperation beyond the limited confines of a buyer-seller relationship and give it the solid foundation of joint manufacturing. The increasing level of localization related to the nuclear plants being built in India with Russia's support are developing a true partnership between us in this field as well. <coughs> Secondly, we are taking our relations beyond our capitals and forming links between the states of India and the regions in Russia. This is no surprise because on the one hand, I have been the chief minister of Gujarat for 13 years and President Putin too understands very well the capabilities and possibilities of Russia's regions. Therefore, it is only natural that he conceived the Eastern Economic Forum and understood the importance of closely associating a country full of diversity like India with this initiative. Any words of appreciation we may use for this initiative will never be enough. Soon after we received his invitation, we started very serious preparations for this. India's Commerce Minister, Chief Ministers from four states of India, and over 150 businessmen came to Vladivostok. The, uh, there were very positive results of their meetings with the special envoy for the Far East and with all the 11 governors of the Far East.
A from framework was created for relations between states and regions, and many new possibilities were highlighted in the fields of coal, diamond mining, rare earths, agriculture, timber, pulp, and paper, and tourism. And now, in order to increase connectivity among regions, a maritime route between Chennai and Vladivostok has been proposed. Thirdly, we have diversified our bilateral cooperation and added new dimensions to it. The highlights and headlines of today are not about the deals between India and Russia regarding oil and gas, but about the unprecedented invested investment by both in each other's hydrocarbon sector. We have agreed upon a five-year roadmap for cooperation in this sector and also for cooperation in exploration of hydrocarbons and LNG in the Far East and Arctic regions. Our long-time cooperation in space is scaling new heights. For Gaganyaan, that is the Indian Human Space Flight Program, Indian astronauts will receive training in Russia. In order to leverage the full potential of mutual investment, we have agreed to soon sign an investment protection agreement. The Russia Plus Desk in India and uh, the Mumbai Office of the Far East Investment and Export Agency of Russia will facilitate mutual investment. Friends, new chapters are being added to our strategic partnership also. The massive tri-service exercise between our countries, the Indra 2019, is a symbol of the growing trust and confidence between us. Whenever the need arose, India and Russia were there for each other, not only in the usual places of the world, but even in Antarctica and the Arctic. The journey, both of the countries understand that in today's day, age, in order to achieve peace and stability, we need a multipolar world, and our cooperation in this and coordination in this will be important to achieve this. That is the reason why in BRICS, SEO, and other global forums, it is natural for us to have close cooperation. Today, as always, we have had open and meaningful discussion on many important global and regional issues. India wants to see an Afghanistan that is independent, safe, united, peaceful, and democratic. We are both against external interference in the internal matters of any country. We also had a useful discussion on India's concept of a free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific. We agree that in areas of cybersecurity, counterterrorism, environment protection, we will further strengthen India-Russia cooperation. Next year, India and Russia will get together to jointly organize a high-level forum on tiger conservation. Once again, I would like to express my deep felt thanks to my friend, President Putin, for this invitation and for the warm welcome. I'm eager to participate in the Eastern Economic Forum tomorrow with him and my other leader friends. I look forward to President Putin's visit to India for the annual summit next year. In 2020, Russia will chair the SCO and BRICS. I'm confident that under the able leadership of President Putin, these organizations will set new records of success. For this, India and I 
personally will extend all possible support. Thank you all very much.